welcome to this afternoon's webinar. Uh, I'd like to introduce our three guests who are with us this afternoon. We have uh, Ranga Rajan from uh, Indonesia, who's the CEO Enterprise Business of Smart Friend Telecom in Indonesia. We have Joseph, who's the Executive Director of Digital Transformation at Fine Hygienic Holding. And we have Shubhajit, who's the General Manager at Danu Hold. Oh, welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Thank you. you. Thank you. And we're going to have a, a, a short chat about uh, virtual experience uh, economy. So first of all, uh, if I can start with uh, Ranga Rajin. Uh, Ranga, it's clearly dependent on the technology that's integrated when we talk about virtual experiences economy. However, it's much more than technology, isn't it? And I'd like you to tell us about your general experience in relation to uh, virtual experience economies. Uh, I do agree that uh, at the end of the day, it's the experience which counts, you know, whether it is physical or digital or what you call virtual uh, scenarios. Um, and uh, with, I think this uh, new pandemic uh, which has come forward uh, and it has created a havoc in many, many areas uh, it's kind of created a new economy which is called virtual or some people call a digital economy or it's a combination of physical and digital which will work in future uh, <clears throat> so in that scenario you need to have a right experience uh, whether today uh, let's say we are having this uh, discussion uh, it's again a virtual uh, experience for everybody it's not real it's not physical but uh, we are on uh, <clears throat> zoom uh, sessions uh, which is there so this is create a kind of a new uh, scenario or a new um, economic uh, uh, <clears throat> uplift for many many uh, uh, organizations in terms of how do how do they do the business in future and, uh, and what kind of experience they need to create from that point of view so i can give you some very good examples um, which has happened uh, in indonesia uh, so uh, there are three specific areas. One, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, uh, <coughs> the e-commerce uh, part of it. Uh, I think the uh, which is really booming because of this uh, pandemic, uh, because there is no uh, physical uh, retail shops are closed. So, so the uh, <coughs> it's created a lot of uh, economy for uh, small and medium business uh, who were never ever on the digital platform or or what earlier but now they have created those platforms for them and they have started doing it because it was a, actually a question of survival for them so that's one area and then the survival can only happen if they are able to get the right experience uh, so we, we have supported many of the organizations which were not even known like they were run from the households and we have created an economy for them in terms of connecting them to uh, very very uh, big businesses or even to the direct to consumers uh, in that and that happened purely because the buying experience or the um, how they interact and engage uh, has been very very uh, simple so basically the model which we have used is called uh, simple modular and precise so these are the three area uh, focus areas which we have done in terms of the economy so that's uh, one part mm, uh, the second area is is in terms of the experience in terms of the engagement itself so we have seen a big uh, uh, so people who never used to engage on uh, your digital uh, part of it now they are on zoom or conferencing doing businesses they are not like sitting at home you know not driving their business but they are pretty, they have changed their behavior uh, in terms of uh, doing their businesses so the third area which we are looking at in terms of is um, uh, productivity uh, which is uh, totally different uh, part of it uh, um, even though people are at their home and how their uh, productivity experience can be generated uh, in a very very similar way that you are uh, sitting in a very specific office or a, across the table so there are three areas which we have been very uh, closely working on it and uh, and the underlying enablement has been due to a lot of um, uh, technologies which include cloud or artificial intelligence or uh, the IoT. So we have used these technologies to build it up, but at the end of the day, it's the experience of engaging, interaction to do business in the same way as you are able to do in a physical world. 
Thank you, Ranga Rajan. Uh, Joseph, uh, same question to you about the experience and not just the technology. At Fine Hygienic Holding, we are the biggest uh, hygiene and wellness manufacturer in our region. Uh, I joined the company in 2017, and the company wanted really to go into the digital world, and they had really no um, no penetration into digital. So my role was to establish a team and go on e-commerce. So 2017, we were only two people. Fast forward to today, to today, um, Fine Hygienic Holding have uh, one of the best um, uh, positioning on Amazon. So we have 80% market share on tissue, we have 80% market share on toilet paper, 30% market share on, on diapers. We even have our own direct to consumer website. So what happened is digital helped us really uh, expand our business. And uh, in, during COVID, the e-commerce business tripled and now e-commerce have a big weight on our net profit. Uh, when we look at the company as a whole on the regional perspective. But it's not only about technology. The interesting part is that uh, digital experience helped us First of all, create more selling channels. So now on top of the existing channels, we have the Amazon and Noon and Jumia channels. We have the Carrefour online channels and we have our own, own, own online store, the fineshop.com. It helped us also create a direct relationship with our customers. So before you used to go through retailers, now we have direct one-to-one -one communication with our own audience. We have access to real-time analytics. Uh, before we used to wait for the Nielsen report every month to see what's happening in order to optimize our business. Today, we have access to real-time data and we can actually take faster decision and swift our strategy and change our strategy, um, I mean, instantly on the spot. This is what happened during COVID time. So we were selling products, understanding what's happening, taking feedback, optimizing the product and reselling again. Uh, it's very interesting also when you go on e-commerce, you can go worldwide. So on a, on, on a single website, we were reaching more than 50 countries. We got ordered from Guatemala, from America, from Australia, from all over the world by going on e-commerce. And uh, finally, also we got new, new partnerships, new engagement with new countries. So uh, the digital experience, definitely there was some technology part of it, but it had a huge impact on our business. Now on the downside, um, some of the stuff that we didn't, that we didn't think about, uh, customer support was really, really hard because the customer became more demanding. So for example, if you deliver something they want in 24 hours, if you don't deliver in 24 hours, you can start complaining. If there is a defect, they, uh, they go crazy. Why it's defective? I mean, uh, and, um, and there is always escalation and they go on LinkedIn, they find your CEO, they find your CFO and they escalate to him and it created the whole mess inside the company. Now it's interesting because it helped us really transform but at the same time, we felt the heat of all this uh, digital economy and how it works. Now, that's all on the digital side. If you talk about the virtual side, I think the virtual economy is a complete different ball game. I mean, we have no experience with virtual. I think the experience I got with virtual was from my kids. So, for example, during COVID, my son came to me one morning and he told me I have an event today at 8 a.m. So he took me to his game called Fortnite, where you have all these players playing online. And there was a live event with more than mil millions of people watching the event at the same time. So for me, it was like the first time. I mean, the biggest concert I saw was like 10,000 people. And now my son is looking online for like more than a million people watching a live event on, on the game. Also, if you talk about virtual experience, uh, there is a game, for example, called GTA. Um, in GTA, he, he, he just go into the game. He does some missions. He buy a house. He buys a car. He works, gets money. So. I mean, when you look at kids, the kids understand the virtual economy much better than we do. And when I look at that and I see that these people, these, these kids are going to grow one day and they would expect to have this virtual economy and they would have to expect this virtual experience. So I think as a company, we still, we're not far, but we don't understand yet the virtual economy. We understand digital very well, but virtual is something to come. I think it's going to come in the near future. So yeah, that was my experience with the whole digital, digital economy thing. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, Shipojit, please, uh, same to you uh, about the experience. So primarily Daniel Home is a retail business into home improvement and furnishing, you know. So we have got big, uh, big box uh, concept, all 100,000 square feet, 80,000 square feet stores in UAE. Are in everywhere. 
So primarily being a, a brick and mortar store, you have footfalls coming in and you know customers coming and shopping from you every day. Thousands of people are coming and shopping from you. Suddenly with this lockdown, everything went for a toss. Suddenly, you know, all the stores have to be shut down and what to do, I mean, revenue suddenly stopped. You need to adapt to the new change. I mean, that is how the world is all about. So what we did, we immediately, you know, adapted to the new change of, uh, you know, digitalization and virtual uh, this thing. So a few immediate and important steps we took. The first one, what we did was, we immediately created a Zoom, uh, what I was telling you just now, we created, we've got a lot of loyal customers, you know, and the, the, the lockdown happened just on the face of the Ramadan, you know, the, because Ramadan was in the month of uh, April. So in March, the lockdown started. So we have to move on because customers have to purchase this part of the world. People does a lot of changes. This is the time when they do the maximum purchases. So we immediately created a digital platform for our customers, wherein they can directly log in through our, you know, the, the every sales team, they have got their own logins of Zoom and Webex meetings. And the staff would virtually do the sales show, show the customers the furniture, the, the the tiles, the sanitary, or the bedrooms or the furnishings, they will show them virtually, give them the complete brief. If they like it, we get it delivered. I mean, uh, we will we will have a you know sort of a dining home, dining room on wheels sort of a thing, wherein the customer will say, okay, I there are a few customers who will be always in double minds. No, I don't think the size will fit in. Can you send it to me to have a look at it? If it fits in or uh, send me both the options. So we really customized and tailor made the entire experience for the customer, and we uh, sort of you know uh, did those uh, digitalized selling. Apart from that, we immediately up uplifted our e-commerce website because the the time the lockdown happened, e-commerce boomed, and the business went five times fivefold. So now to have a fivefold business, you need to uh, uh, if the retail business uh, the brick and mortar would have you know, work it's by its own, then we might to have, might would have had a lot of difficulties in delivering because of fleet and all. But since the stores were down and e-commerce was fivefold, it was very, very easy for us to immediately change the shift and ch shift the gears towards e-commerce and focus primarily on that. And as what Joseph said, we started getting a lot of, you know, inquiries from Africa, from uh, Uganda, from even from UK, from India, a lot of inquiries we got because we were also posting a lot of things online for the for the for a particular uh, set of customers apart from that the biggest the biggest change or the shift what we did we created a virtual showroom online virtual showroom wherein we have a flagship store next to mall of emirates uh, Al -Warsha. that's a hundred thousand square feet store so there what we created is a complete virtual experience for the customer he can virtually walk through the entire showroom all the floors you could be created a store directory uh, you need uh, furniture, you need garden, you need bedrooms, you need uh, furnishings or home decor. You select, you click and virtually you walk through the entire store as if, you know, you are there. And then you can online from there itself, you can place orders and you can get the these things done. Apart from that, uh, every year, you know, we have two very big mega season. One is the Ramadan and the, the garden work which is right now going on. We have catalogs where in the entire collection, we unveil the entire collection of Ramadan and uh, garden so every time every year what we do we, we print around 500,000 700,000 1 million copies of those catalogs and we distribute across customers houses and everywhere door deliveries and customer handouts and all but now because of covid thanks to covid it's all contactless so what how do we move forward so we created an e-catalog i mean of course i mean if you guys since you guys are in dubai you can also see across the city we have painted it with dadugom.com and e-catalog the catalogs are all, you know up, up now so we started sharing our e-catalogs with all our customers and again the customers would book through an appointment on a webex call with our staff and you know move forward so these are the basic uh you know uh, four or five parameters what we i mean uh, steps we took just to ensure that the business should move on we give a customer uh, our customers uh, you know a, a proper uh, shopping experience and the business should move on from there that's how it is like. Thank you, uh, Shipojit. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the disruption here. And uh, in a way, you guys have already talked about um, the, uh, the change through COVID. But let's focus on that a little bit. We often know that innovation can only happen with disruption. And this was a disruption <laughs> that uh, was delivered to us, uh, if you like. 
So you've talked in general, but if you were to look, if you were to say today, the disruption in relation to COVID, the biggest change, positive change, the opportunity that came out of that, that perhaps you wouldn't have uh, uh, looked at and perhaps wouldn't have happened in your organization six, seven months ago. Can you focus on that one thing that you say that was that was because of the business was disrupted. So Ranga, uh, over to you. Uh, what was the biggest uh, opportunity that came from this disruption? Yeah, uh, I think um, our business uh, is more about uh, because we, we talk about business relationship is more uh, B2B kind of a relationship. And when you do B2B, it's more uh, personal relationship rather than uh, because we are looking looking at multi-million dollar deals you know those deals do not happen uh, virtually at any point of time um, so this was a big uh, uh, blow to us you know when our sales team or engagement and when we also want to create architecture solution and all that so it's these are very difficult to, without having a face to face and getting the clients and customers confidence uh, when you're not uh, able to show them the real value so uh, I think suddenly one day it happened that we can't meet anybody. So and uh, so this was a big, big disruption for us from that point of view. And the, the biggest one is the people's mindset. You know, uh, suddenly uh, everything is shut down and uh, they thought, yes, yes, now we can't do much about it because we can't uh, grow from here. So I think that this was the, another big challenge, uh, not only from the customer point of view and also from the our own internal uh, team point of view. Yeah. So it's like they were like, okay, how do I now sell? How do I now uh, service the customer? How do I? Uh, th- there is no this uh, entire thing is uh, uh, stuck. So these two were very big uh, challenges. So when we found out, not only for us, but when we talked to our customers, I think uh, they also had the same issues. So in this case, what we uh, came out with some uh, innovation, uh, innovative I- ideas in terms of. Yes, if we want to change uh, ourselves, we need to also change some of the customers way they are doing it. So and how they how they can go and work with their customers in a very similar fashion. So we build up certain technologies which are um, based on cloud based technologies uh, based on IoT and artificial intelligence in terms of how you interact and engage with your customers and how you can build up those uh, uh, more uh, personalized interaction engagement. So it. It's like, I won't still say that it is perfect to having a face-to-face uh, kind of an engagement, but it's near to face-to-face uh, kind of, because uh, if you look at even in the conference also, when you open a conference, it's uh, 90% of the time you will find that uh, 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 most of the people do not want to open their video mm, for whatever may be the reason. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it is, you know, whether you're talking to any customer or client, once you do not see the face of a customer, then you do not know his reaction, whether he's happy or not happy and all that. So these are really some very big challenges for our businesses. But I think uh, over a period of time when we created certain engagement platforms, which uh, not only our customers can come on board uh, onto those platforms and also look at what we are doing it and how we can help their customers. Uh, that's how uh, look at. I can give a good example in terms of, you know, uh, when they, everything got shut down, a uh, lot of customers said, how do I engage with my customer? Indonesia, I know, you know, there are 18,000 islands, whereas where maybe uh, unlike UAE, where you can reach in uh, four hours in one part of the country to another, uh, it's like 18,000 islands. How do you reach somebody who's sitting in the remote island with lack of network and uh, all that and how do I engage with them so and he that di- that guy or a business doesn't understand this technology and how do you teach them to do it I think that was the biggest challenge for us I think um, we created certain ecosystems with our partners and uh, with our customers to build a very strong uh, digital platform which uh, including teaching coaching enablement uh, payments and everything so which help us to overcome this uh, challenge for us Thank you, Renga. Uh, Joseph, same question to you. Uh, You know, in relation to the disruption and uh, what happened and what was positive that maybe wouldn't have happened without this this disruption. Yeah, our our life changed. Well, um, I'm going to tell you a very little story now. In fine, this is our tissue box. 
we are we are known to be ha- to have like the only sterilized tissue in the world like it's like when you when the box is closed it's actually 100% sterilized it's germ free and for the last two years we've been working with a company called living guard and these people have some kind of of um, of uh, technology that they can apply on tissue and the tissue will stay sterilized even after you remove it from the box and even after you use it it actually kills the virus but for the last two years, we've been trying to apply that technology on our tissues. It was not working. Suddenly, COVID came, and our CEO just woke up one morning. It was February 26, I think. And he called us and he said, you know what, guys, I have a great idea. Now, we cannot apply this on tissue yet, but maybe we can apply it on masks. And imagine a mask that can actually kill the virus. We said, yeah, it's an amazing idea. He said, OK, you have eight days. You have seven days to go live and sell on Amazon. And we said, Man, we don't have a brand. We don't even have the mask. He said, I don't care. Let's do it. We have seven days. So second day we woke up. He came and said, well, where are you at? We said, we didn't even start. He said, you have six days left. So what we did on the sixth day, we started. So we created the logo. We created the packaging. We sold the product. We tried it. We got approval. We listed in Dubai municipality. We got the packaging on a Saturday. Sunday it was on Amazon and we listed like a hundred items on Amazon after eight days. So we missed by one day. The first hundred masks got sold in six hours. So after that, the entire company rallied against, uh, I mean, rallied with us. And we started growing the business and growing the business. And suddenly this new category called Find God, it was like a small test with a hundred masks, became like uh, the biggest point on our PNL. And, the, and today we sold more than, I don't know, maybe two to three million masks. And, and this went, because it went online, we, we, all, we also opened a website in a matter of like a week. It was live with the payment gateway and the whole thing. And we started shipping orders worldwide, uh, all over the world. Um, and we started recruiting people. And because there was COVID, people couldn't come. Even we came up with the idea of, okay, now there is COVID and everybody is at home. There is no need to recruit anybody in Dubai. We can recruit anywhere in the world. So we recruited people from Eastern Europe and to do design mainly and to do some videos and help us on social media and help us online. So we started really growing our network all by sitting at home. We were all already at home. So we created a whole new category. Now, what's interesting about the whole thing is that this thing triggered so many other things. So we came up this, this is like the mask that we came up with. We came up with multiple masks. We came up with gloves as well that killed the virus. We came up with so much technologies and this thing could change the entire company culture. Today, today all our sh- cycles are shorter. Whenever we wanna go to market, now we go faster. The entire company is much more efficient. We are more entrepreneurial. So I think today, if we look at where we were, I mean, the company is going IPO. Our IPO project was like for 2023, and now we are pushing it to 2021 because of what happened this year and the efficiency that we had. Even our shareholders and board members were like thrilled with what the team had done. So, um, so yeah, if I look at this, I think the whole company got much more entrepreneurial and we were, we were really afraid to lose the business. We were really afraid to lose our core business. So we came up with a complete new category, complete new market and completely new approach. Now, the opportunity definitely is um, um, we are talking about uh, worldwide expansion and we are talking about a whole new channel, which is e-commerce that we that before was something nice to have. And today it's like one of the main channels in our company. And even though e-commerce doesn't constitute more than seven or 8% of the company's uh, revenue, but at the same time, it's one channel where you can go and test and you can go live in a, in a minute and you go test your product. And then when you understand the impact, they can, you can go back to the market and start marketing it properly in the, in the retail shops. So yeah, when we look at COVID, I think that was the biggest impact that we had, I mean, on our company. Yes, sir. Fascinating story, Joseph. Very inspiring, and I think I even saw people with the masks walking around with the little, uh, the little logos. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm yeah. going to tell you something funny. Uh, we are a Jordanian company with a family business, and for 60 years, Fine have been known for tissue. Okay, so whenever, whenever you go to any supermarket and you say, "I want Fine," the guy understands that you want tissue, and he gives you tissue. Now, after COVID, when you say fine in Jordan, they tell you, ah, fine, the mask, you mean. <laughs> so now they forgot about the tissue and we are the mask company. You know, that's how, how impactful it was uh, during COVID. Yeah, it's extraordinary how you can see change through adversity, if you like. Amazing. Um, Shipojit, over to you. Uh, s- same story. Uh, you know, change is the only constant in life. That is how and every organization should be dynamic to newer adaptabilities. 
so what happened uh, we as i told you we are a brick and mortar retail business we are uh, retailing 35000 products of home improvement and furnishing so now what happened when the st- when the lockdown happened and the social distancing and people you know less people started coming into the stores because of the scare of covid and all we realized that conversions have increased but the footfalls of course have decreased so now what to do we cannot keep on that right so all this time our e-commerce portal we basically two things two things what we immediately made changes i, I, I just tell you in the short way uh, in the e-commerce all this time we have been primarily retailing the furniture and only furniture in garden so when the when the covid came and uh, this lockdown all happened we identified that there is no e-commerce website there is no you know a portal in the middle east who is selling the complete home home improvement and furnishing category i mean you will not find any e-commerce website selling sanitary chandelier tiles parquet flooring curtains blinds or furniture and garden under all under one roof someone would be selling only furniture someone would be selling home decor someone would be selling only you know ready made curtains but there is no concept as one con- you know as one stop shop where we can this thing and now dining home since everyone knows we being a completely one stop retail destination we we took 7 to 10 days to uplift the entire website you know we'll go back to the vendors we we'll go back to the it team erp team and checked out again how we can how soon we can make the changes in the website because uh, the b- before covid the the t- transactions in the e-commerce and after covid the, in the first month itself we saw a huge traction coming in so it really was it was the, the entire e-commerce team went through a horrendous time uplifting and upgrading the entire e-commerce but within no time 25 27 days time the entire e-commerce engine was rebuilt rebuilt in a way so that it can attract thousands of customers in one shot it can you know uh, uh, accept payments it can get the delivery mechanism done it can get the delivery management system done the fleet planning done the you know installations everything has to happen otherwise it's only not just one sided selling so it took us 20 25 days basically to uh, three, uh, three, three and three and a half weeks to you know uh, create the entire engine and then we again relaunch the entire e-commerce portal as a one stop retail solution for the complete home interior and improvement needs and to our surprise the business as i told you just now a little while ago the business grew five folds the concepts uh, earlier if furniture used to contribute 60 percent garden used to contribute 20 percent and home home decor the balance whatever now furniture has reduced and sanitary electrical chandeliers their shares have gone up which shows people have really welcomed that entire concept of having a one-stop destination on e-commerce where they can really you know do the complete interior designing purchasing of the products and you know multiple products they can purchase and they can this thing that is that is an immediate adaptability for for our end second we found out during the covid time what happened a lot of people were losing jobs a lot of people were shifting their bases the the people who were living in villas they you know upgraded themselves to a bigger villa the people who are living in apartments they upgraded themselves into the villa because the prices the rentals went really rock bottom down i mean now a four bedroom villa in uh, you know in in, in forjan we find it out in 19000 100000 dirhams so the, the the people who used to pay for a three bedroom now they can afford a villa sort of a thing so then a lot of traction was happening likewise a lot of traction was happening back home I mean, people who had invested in their properties back home in UK, in Egypt, in India, in Philippines, they were buying things from here and they wanted to because they are shifting, they lost their jobs and they wanted to shift back. We started a service called Store to Door. Store to Door is a service wherein we will give them an end to end solution. You buy your lifestyle in UAE and you bring your lifestyle back home in India or Egypt or this thing. We got in the first month itself when we started you know, this, this service only in Dubai out of both the stores. We got a huge traction around 550 inquiries in the first two weeks we got. We realized that this concept can really take it, take us to the next level. And then we again built on the entire engine of how to make the entire system seamless, how to make sure that the customer seamlessly, because when you bring things back home, you have your customs, you have duty, you have the, you know, the, the, the port, a lot of hassles you have to go through. So extending that uh, exemplary customer service for as, as a commitment for Daniel Home, we really went out of the way we set up that entire engine wherein the customers can buy here and get their materials delivered at their doorstep 
in their particular you know city or town so we have delivered in uk we have delivered in egypt we delivered in jordan we amman we de- we delivered in uh, uh, in india kerala most of, most of them was in south of southern part of india so that's how so it was a very good learning for us we realized that how customers are changing their behavior how you know how you can adapt to the new changes looking at the customers behavior you know so these were the two bigger changes biggest uh, adaptabilities we did during this uh, entire challenging time wherein we uplifted our e-commerce portal we gave them that seamless services and we committed to their uh, to our delivery standards of within 24 hours or 48 hours or, you know 36 hours of deliveries with again uh, complete end to end solution uh, as i was telling you i mean when the delivery team is going to the customer site as their home the entire team is going with pp kit with complete sanitization and complete health cards and all those things just to ensure the customers don't feel that you know you you should not unwelcome the delivery crew i'd like to ask you about uh, the, the one piece of technology we've talked about how things evolved and and the business and the products moved differently and different products were were generated which piece of technology couldn't uh, you you couldn't have done this without so ranga is there a piece of technology that you're you're with now that you we couldn't yeah. have done any of this without this technology i think the one technology is cloud everybody is now depending on cloud as a platform to uh, move on this and I, i think even this call is happening on cloud so uh, without this probably we would not have done it uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, if this technology didn't exist i think we can't imagine what would have happened in terms of the uh, overall economy uh, or the engagement uh, <laughs> in the entire part so just to give examples you know like uh, like when everybody said work from home you know oh, that's the norm uh, what do you do um, so they have like we have banks we have uh, uh, many service industries and many other people they just have to go and work from home and without the cloud technology they cannot access the data they cannot do it so we kind of created using this cloud technology uh, to create the office uh, the office environment at home yeah which may not be the greatest thing to be <laughs> done but that's if today we are able to work from home is because of this cloud technology i think uh, without this probably uh, we can't imagine what would happen even probably with worst case <laughs> worst than this yeah 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 thanks ranga it, it's uh, something we probably take for granted but yeah, what an innovation yeah. it is <laughs> yes yes, <laughs> And, yes. Uh, we could work yeah. without it now Joseph, yeah, just, just for example, you know, we just moved like almost a big call center, and we moved them in a few, a few days' time so that everybody can work from home. Uh, bank banks can work from home. Uh, all the employees can work from home with the right security provided. So it's like you have created a virtual bank environment at home uh, for the uh, customers. So, and I don't think so that's possible without the cloud technology. Absolutely, Joseph. Uh, technology in relation to what happened. uh with all your products and services yeah um definitely the cloud i would say uh that's definitely a big point now uh video conferencing is definitely a biggest the biggest thing ever i mean the whole company couldn't have moved an inch if we didn't have this video conferencing happening so i think because it's also cloud based so it's oriented to the cloud now um so i think video conferencing is one cloud but One thing that I don't think we can move anywhere in the future is AI because now everybody is online we're getting so much data now we are trying to manage as much as we can but I cannot even think on how we're going to be able to cope with all of this data we need something to help us analyze this data in real time take much faster decision understand the behavior because now everything is being done more or less manually and ai is still today it's i mean again i i know in multiple industries is very mature but it's not really mature for our business and for many other businesses you still need some really expert guy to to deal with ai i think ai should be done should become um more accessible for people like for example like i mean again before the iphone nobody understood what do you mean by internet in your hand i don't need it but once you got it in your hand with the iphone you understood the power of it and now nobody can live without it i think it ai should at some point reach this level so that enterprises can use it and start really 
analyzing data, analyzing behavior, coming up with the right product at the right time with the right market. I really don't see how we can move forward if we don't have the help of AI. Um, now, definitely, again, the cloud is there. I cannot say that the cloud saved us. It was there before and it will stay there. It's, it's a good thing to have. But I think AI is what's going to make the cloud much more effective. That's, that's in, my, in my view, what, where, we, where we need to go. Thank you, Josie, uh, indeed, uh, what's going on now and, and what we have to look forward to and, and, and take note of for sure. Gentlemen, uh, that brings us to the end of uh, uh, today's uh, webinar. I just want to thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. It's, it's fascinating, really. Some of the things that I think I know about, because obviously I'm here and going out and seeing what's going on, and, and you put a lot of that realism into, into the, the picture of what you think is happening in and around products and services and you guys have confirmed some of the, the stuff that you know is, is incredible uh, in terms of how people adapt how opportunities can come out of disruption difficult times um, that's for sure um, but still you can see that um, uh, innovation and disruption and uh, with the virtual experience economy is very much uh, alive. So gentlemen, thank you for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure spending time with you. I wish you uh, all the success going forward and look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you so much.